Okay, let's talk all about camping in Zion National Park. There's nothing like sleeping under the beautiful giant red rock monoliths in this park, uh, seeing the stars, being right next to the river. It's absolutely magical. But today I wanna help you know where to camp and how to get a campsite so that you can have this fabulous experience. My name is Ash, I'm a former park ranger and the founder of Dirt in My Shoes. I also am from Utah and have spent a ton of time in Zion National Park. I actually used to live right down there and so I've camped in that area a bunch. I know the park really well and today I am really excited to talk to you about your camping options and how to get a site. So let's jump right in. A few things you'll wanna know, Zion has three front country campgrounds. These are campgrounds that you can drive your car to. They're easy to get to. That's the more traditional camping that you're probably thinking of. Um, so those are the three campgrounds we're going to talk about today. I'm not talking about any of the backcountry options in this video. And so if you want more information about that, you can go to the Zion website and find out about getting permits for the backcountry camping. Today is just about the front country sites, the South Watchman and Lava Point campgrounds. A few things you'll want to note. So there is a 14 day stay limit for these campgrounds. Each site fits six people. And so if you have more than that, you'll need to book multiple sites and two vehicles and your trailer, your RV does count as one vehicle. So keep that in mind. The other thing is that in April and May, we have what's called tent caterpillar season. Uh, and the cottonwoods that are in the campgrounds are just full of caterpillars. And so they will be all over the campground. They will fall onto your tent. I have camped in Zion during this season and I personally would not recommend it. It's not, I'm not a big fan of bugs, um, but if you don't mind, then go for it. I just wanted to let you know in case that uh, makes your decision different. <laughs> uh, the other thing is that these campgrounds get extremely hot in the summer. The Zion can be over 100 degrees during the day in the summer. Um, these campgrounds do have some shade, but um, not everything is shaded. There's no hookups. And so uh, if you're in a trailer or something and you wanna be able to run an AC, uh, that just might not be an, a, a possibility for you. So you wanna keep that in mind too, as you're looking at these campgrounds and deciding what you're going to do, um, just keep your comfort level in mind for that. Okay, so let me show you where these campgrounds are. I think that will help make your decision a little bit easier as to where you wanna stay. So looking at the map of Zion National Park, we have, so this is the main area of Zion. This is where most of the stuff is. This is the Zion Canyon Scenic Drive right up in here. And then this is the eastern side of the park, which is a little bit quieter, not as busy, and not as much to do. And so the campgrounds, what you have is you have the Watchman Campground right here and the South Campground right here. Both of these are right next to the Zion Canyon Visitor Center, which is extremely convenient because the Zion Canyon Visitor Center is where you'll pick up the shuttle to get up into the Zion Canyon Scenic Drive. So for most of the year, you're required to take a mandatory shuttle. And the closer you can get to the Zion Canyon Visitor Center, the better as far as catching that shuttle. So those campgrounds are perfectly situated. They're in a great spot. Those are the ones I would try to stay in, is the Watchmen or South. Now, as I mentioned, there is another campground in this park that's a front country campground, and this is the Lava Point Campground but I wanna show you on the map where it is because this will sway your decision for staying here. So there is another section of Zion. If you go out and then you come back in along the Kolob Terrace Road up here, then as you drive to basically the very end of the road, it's, it's quite far up there, and then you cut in over here, this is where the Lava Point Campground is. And so if you're going to stay up here, it's going to take you a long time to get back down all the way down here to where you need to catch the shuttle and everything. This is a completely different section of the park. The draw for Lava Point for people is that it is right where the West Rim Trail starts. And so if you're wanting to backpack some of these longer trails back in here, 
You've got the West Rim Trail, which is really popular for backpacking. This one takes you down and you can actually, you'll go by Angel's Landing as you hike this trail down in here and then drop down in the Zion Canyon. So a lot of people like to hike that trail, but for a first time visitor, most of you won't. So keep that in mind as you're looking at Lava Point, it's just really not ideally situated as a first time visitor hoping to see the main sites down in here. As far as the individual campgrounds go, uh, to learn more about these, I have a full article on dirtmyshoes.com that will walk you through the specifics of these campgrounds so that you can decide which one best fits your situation. So you'll find this article on Dirt in My Shoes or I'll link it below this video. It has information that you need plus individual information about each campground. Again, for most people, Choosing between the South or the Watchmen, both are a great choice. They're very similar in amenities. You'll have a similar experience in both of them, and you'll be located in basically the same area. So you can read through this to see if there's something that matters a little bit more to you between one or the other. But again, either way, as a first-time visitor, the Watchmen or South are great options. The biggest difference, and we'll talk about this in a minute, is that both require reservations. In fact, all three campgrounds in Zion require reservations. So I'll, sh I'll walk you through that process here in a minute. But for the Watchmen, those reservations can be made six months in advance. For the South, it's more of a last minute reservation. And so you can make those reservations two weeks in advance. How that will affect you is if you are not able to get a reservation six months in advance, if you're not sure uh, when you're gonna take your trip or you miss that reservation release, uh, then you'll probably have better luck getting a reservation at the South Campground uh, for that two week in advance release. But not necessarily because um, that South Campground does get booked up really quickly. And so uh, it just kind of depends on when you get online, when you're trying to make these reservations as to which campground might work better for you. Uh, I highly, highly recommend trying to get those reservations six months in advance if you can and just staying in the Watchmen because uh, it's not quite as competitive if you're a little bit further out from your trip, not as many people know their plans yet. And so you have a slightly better chance of actually getting a campground reservation six months in advance um, than you will for that two weeks in advance for the South Campground. So keep that in mind as well. That is a deciding factor as well as to where you might be able to stay during your trip to Zion. Okay, so now I wanna show you the actual reservation process for getting a reservation at uh, any of the campgrounds in Zion, but specifically the South and Watchmen, which are the ideal spots to stay as a first time visitor. So I am on recreation.gov. This is the website that the national parks use to make all those reservations. And so I'm putting it in Zion National Park. You will need to make an account in advance and log in. Do that before you even need to make your reservation, at least a couple of days before probably. Okay, so I'm coming down here and I'm going to choose my campground. So let's start with the Watchmen. So when you come down here, you will notice there's a, a night here and a night there, but most of these are already reserved up because these released six months in advance at 8 a.m. and you're gonna wanna be online right at that time, six months in advance of your travel dates to try to get one of these. So keep that in mind. What I can do is I can look at the map here and you can see there's a little bit more availability in here. So let's go into August. I'm gonna put in a couple nights here. Now this, Zion G, so this is a group site. If you hover over it, it will tell you or it will show you over in here. This is a group site. These are more expensive. You have to have a certain number of people, usually around 20 people at least to book these. And so those really aren't an option for me. And coming down here, you'll see everything's reserved up except for like these one nights here and there. You are booking a specific campsite. So I recommend getting on here and looking at the campsites in advance to make sure that they're going to fit the equipment that you have, the tent size, the trailer size, all of that. You'll want to make sure that you're checking this beforehand. And it is pretty picked over. <laughs> it looks like mostly what we have are group sites. I'm just scrolling through here to see if there's anything that's more than a day. Group sites. 
These are all group sites. So I will show you just on one of these that only has a night. Like you could do like one night here and one night here to get those two nights. Nope, those are group sites too. Okay. These are normal ones. <laughs> one night here and one night here. So Zion is very competitive. Very, very competitive. Okay, now we have a little bit more availability. <laughs> These sites over here, so this is for October, and so it's just, it's further out. They've recently been released and haven't been snatched up yet. And so, yeah, we got some good options back in here. Okay, so don't choose the group sites. <laughs> There's a group site right here. That loop G is a group site, Zion G. But the rest of these are okay. And if you have any equipment, then this is where I would put it in. So say you have a 30-foot travel trailer, which is what we have. So I'm going down here. Got some options here. This is where you can also put, so there are electric hookups. If you're able to get one of these, then you would be able to run an, an AC or something during the heat. But here we go. Okay, so... As you can see, a larger site is very hard to come by here. We've got a couple nights over here. So I'm gonna click on these and you're gonna wanna look at the site. And this is what I recommend doing in advance because doing this the day of just is really, okay, so somebody booked that site already, just barely. Okay, and this one does have an electricity hookup, so that's nice. It can fit up to 40 feet, and then here's your tent size. So this is what you're looking at as you're scouting out which sites are going to work for you. This one no longer has availability, though, so I can't do that. But as you're looking through, you will want to read all this and make sure that it is going to fit the equipment you have and that it's going to work for you. Okay, so I'm coming back into here. I'm going to look at, let's look at this B1. Let's see what this one looks like. Okay, so this one's looking pretty good. Look, it's got a beautiful view, nice flat driveway, big driveway, can fit a large tent. And so I'm gonna put in those November dates. Want two nights here. Read through all of this, make sure it looks okay. Read through all of this, this is important information here. And then you'll just add it to your cart. And as soon as you get it into your cart, then you can <laughs> relax a little bit. You can take your time filling this out. Make sure you put in the equipment and the number of vehicles, read through all of that, and then you can complete your purchase. So yes, they do get snatched up. I had to go all the way to November to find even two nights together um, <laughs> that would fit a larger vehicle. And so um, this does get snatched up pretty quickly. Um, your options will become very limited as it gets closer to your travel dates. And so again, the further out you can go to that six month mark is best if you can six months in advance to really have the most options for your camping needs. Now I wanna show you what it looks like for the South Campground because this one is not six months in advance. This one is two weeks in advance. And these ones do get snatched up way quicker because it's two weeks in advance and everybody is like, now they're sure that they're gonna go and they're sure of what they need and so it just makes it a lot harder to get in there. So I'm going to refresh because I need it to clear out my dates. And let's pull it down. So this is, and this is what's interesting as you're looking through this. So there's a lot of C's in here. If you hover over it, it says closure maintenance. So many of their campsites right now are just closed for maintenance. There's hardly any that are actually open and reservable. So that definitely, you know, adds an extra level of, of hardness to getting this campsite reservation. So if I go forward a few days, because you'll see all of these have been reserved. Everything has been reserved for the two weeks. If you hover over when you see these NRs, this means it's not released yet. So you can hover over it here and click on it and then it will tell you when it will be released. So. I want to go on the 14th of July. It says to check back on June 30th, which is tomorrow at 8 a.m. And what that means for you is that you need to be there right when it opens, right at 8 a.m. You need to already know which campsite you're going for. You need to already have the dates and, and everything that you need to put in there because right at 8 a.m., those not released uh, buttons will turn blue and they will say available and you've got to hurry and put it in as fast as you can and click book. 
get it into your cart as close to that 8 a.m. time, mountain time that you can. Uh, those are gonna get snatched up really quickly. As you can see, they're already all gone for today and I'm doing this um, not that long after 8 a.m. and everything's already gone. So to get into the South Campground, you're gonna need to be a lot more on top of things. You're going to need to already know which campsite you wanna go for, have a short list of ones that will work for you and get in there right when they open up. The other thing that I recommend to really boost your chances of getting the campsite you want is having any other adults that will be camping with you make their own login at recreation.gov and to get on and try uh, at the same time. So, so a lot of times when we're trying to get campsites in these harder to get areas, I will make an account and my husband will make an account and we'll both try for the campsites when they open up at 8 a.m. And that doubles your chances. It makes it a little bit easier to, to have a chance to get that. And so that's another little tidbit that I highly recommend if you're trying to get a campsite. Again, as you can see, so starting tomorrow, you're only going to have one, two, three, four, five, five campsites that are going to be available tomorrow when they release. And so that is just extremely competitive. Trying to get these sites in Zion is really difficult. And so again, if you can have two people trying to get it at the same time, as you make sure you're there right when it opens up, that will increase your chances. But there are going to be a lot of people trying to go for those five campsites that are opening up. There are other options outside of the park. There's some boondocking options. There are some RV parks, things like that. I like to use the campendium.com website to do that, to find those options. So if you're unable to get something at the South or Watchmen, uh, just know there are some other options in the area. You won't be as perfectly situated for exploring Zion, but it will be something. So keep that in mind too. Um, all hope is not lost if you're not able to get these but I hope that this video has helped walk you through that process and give you a really good understanding so that you can go camping in beautiful Zion National Park.